I'm Shay Russell for mining.com.au and joining me today is the President and CEO of Faraday Copper, Paul Harbage. Paul, how are you today? Yeah, I'm good, Shay. Thank you and uh, great to be talking with you again. Now, I'm thrilled to have you back on because a metal that I've been quite passionate about for quite some time is copper. Uh, and I wanted to bring you on today so we could have sort of a, a fundamental conversation around copper. Now, Faraday Copper has picked up their copper project in the Arizona region. But I've got to ask, why did you decide to pursue copper? Because for a long time, chasing copper deposits was unpopular. Yeah, no, Shay, I, you know, most of my career I've been in gold. So, um, you know, transitioned into the new gold, copper. And uh, <laughs> I, I think, look, it, it, it wasn't necessarily through choice. It was more really the primary driver was the quality of the asset. You know, the fact that it had the right geology, uh, the right opportunity. Uh, and therefore, first and foremost, that's why we went uh, for Copper Creek and, and copper. But I think, you know, in light of, of the energy transition, you know, the demand for copper, then it was the right decision to make. So you've lightly touched on the energy transitions as your reason to pursue uh, Copper Creek. But what are some of the fundamentals driving copper at the moment? Yeah, look, I think, as you point out, I mean, it is all about the, the clean energy transition, global electrification, renewable energy, you know, the move from um, internal combustion engines to electric vehicles. I mean, you know, as we said on that renewable energy, whether it's um, wind turbine, solar, you know, all of these items are going to require you know, copper, including, you know, big investments in international grids to support this electrification as well. And so, you know, demand for copper. I mean, I think everybody out there puts graphs in terms of, you know, the, the projected the future use of copper, the fact that we're going to have to, you know, is it mine more copper over the next few years than we have done in the last 5,000 years. So, you know, every, everything points to, uh, you know, increased demand and usage for copper. Um, again, I just wouldn't mind delving into it a, a tiny bit more. You talked about, you know, some of the big demand graphs that are out there. Uh, you know, recently in a conversation with somebody, they mentioned that data centres are going to be one of the new drivers for uh, copper demand going forward. Can we realistically put numbers to this future copper demand? Or do you think that it's still too hard to fathom just how much copper we need going forward? I mean, there's that old saying in geology, you know, uniformitarianism about looking for the past of the key to the future. The, the challenge for the modern world really is that, you know, we're, we don't know, you know, because we, it's almost like a new industrial revolution, right? And so, you know, while, while everybody, you know, points to these graphs, I mean, I think what we're seeing is things are not happening as quickly as everybody makes out it to be. Um, you know, we've suddenly seen, particularly in the West, the slowdown in, in EV uptake. But I think some of that is a consequence. You know, we're not seeing the infrastructure to support that uh, rollout happening. And and so a lot of question marks. And I think, you know, again, it comes to that bigger question. You know, when, when you affect change, you know, people don't like change because it puts them out of their comfort zone. So people's immediate response is no. I don't want this change, but it's going to happen. But as I say, it's not happening at the pace at which, you know, governments and environmentalists have been expecting. And, and hence why we've started to see, you know, governments having to renag on their commitments because we're not meeting those goals. Um, let's tie this back to your Copper Creek project in Arizona. Now, let's be honest, you've been looking for copper for some time, and this project is showing enormous uh, potential quite early on. But for everybody who's new to copper exploration and turning them into a mine, it can take quite some time, can't it? It can. I mean, anywhere, you know, up to 10, 20 years from, you know, initial discovery. Um, and, and I think, you know, that, that's the, the other issue we see. And I mean, I, you know, if, we, if we're having one of those philosophical discussions, you know, and we, we sort of take it back to the 70s and 80s, you know, in the West when, you know, we decided we didn't want, um, you know, these industrial plants, we didn't want industrial output, we'd, we'd move it to the Far East where we could get cheaper products. You know, and countries like China really, really embraced that industrial revolution, you know, and, and the fact that, you know, subsequently they've gone out, acquired, 
you know, all of the natural resources globally around the world. They've built out their, you know, smelting infrastructure. They're really controlling supply of all these critical metals going forward. You know, they're also now leading the way on on EVs and and the sort of cheaper version of those EVs. And and suddenly, you know, we in the West don't don't like it, do we? And and so we say, well, no, stop. We're not importing that. We're going to put tariffs on this. And the reality is. The, the West is as, asleep at the wheel and is really not, you know, you know, delivering policies um, to to enact on, on this clean energy transition because, you know, we're almost held at ransom then by, you know, NGOs and environmental groups who suddenly turn around and say, well, we don't want mining. And, and unfortunately, you know, or fortunately, mining is a key component of this transition. I mean, you think modern civilization, you know, you just look around you and, and everything, you know, comes back to mining. And we're going to need to do a lot more of that if we're going to supply the metals for this transition and I you know there's some phenomenal statistics about you know how many mines need to be built and you know when you start thinking about copper there's very few new mines being built. Uh, Listen Paul that is a great overview of some of the fundamentals driving the copper market right now. Um, We will have to bring today to a close but I look forward to speaking with you uh, coming up regarding some more information about why you decided to choose the Copper Creek project in Arizona. Thank you so much for being here today. It was a pleasure, Shay.